What's up, Can I Flex family? And thank you, thank you, thank you for coming back to the channel. If you have not yet subscribed to the channel, please make sure you do that. Go down there, click that subscribe button, and also click that bell. That way you're notified every time I upload some content. Now, if you follow me on Instagram, you know I post a lot of um, then now pictures, you know, before or after pictures. Even though I'm not technically after, I'm still certainly on a weight loss journey. Um, my most requested video has been this video. How did you lose 40 plus pounds? Um, my mission or my goal is to lose another 40, but I feel like this video is still important for me to do because I'm still in my journey and I wanna just talk through how I made it to, I guess my halfway point. Um, I wanna describe who I was when I had a not so healthy relationship with food or exercise and kinda get to, kinda just describe how I landed here and what I plan to incorporate moving forward to continue to help me lose an additional 40 pounds. Um, at my highest or my heaviest weight, I was about 235. Um, my lowest right about now, I'm at like 190, 189. Um, so yeah, 40 pounds is about right. Initially, before I started this journey, I was a girl who was the party girl, drinking, eating, not really tracking my calories. I didn't think it was important. And sometimes you can gain so much weight and, and gain it fast that you don't even realize how much your body has changed until maybe you see a picture of yourself or you start to realize, I'm really out of shape. And that's what happened to me. I gained so much weight so quickly that I never even got the chance to sit back and say, whoa, you gained weight. It was just one day I saw a picture of myself and I was just like, wow, like you really, really need to chill. And it wasn't even just about gaining weight. I was unhealthy. I was in my early 20s diagnosed with hypertension. That's something that already runs in my family, diabetes, heart conditions. So it was really like changing my life and my relationship with health and fitness to me felt like life or death. Like I had to do it, not only to feel good, but to be in a better place um, mentally, spiritually, and as far as my health goes. So to start out, I had no idea what I was doing. I didn't know how to properly exercise. I didn't know how to properly diet. I assumed that if I go to the gym and just eat a little bit less, or if I go to the gym and eat a salad, I'm gonna lose mad weight. Of course I was wrong. Then I started Googling all of these diets, lose 10 pounds in three days diet, lose 15 pounds in a week diet. All of those were also the wrong answer. I don't even really like the word diet. I feel like it's a bad, I feel like it's like a sabotage word. It's also like a sad word. You tell somebody you're going on a diet, they're like, like diet just takes so much energy out of you, changes your demeanor. It's just, I don't like that word. I changed my relationship with food and with nutrition. So today I'm gonna go over all the tips that I implemented to lose that 40 plus pounds and all those tips that I plan to incorporate to continue on this journey and losing another 40. Before I keep going, I just wanna throw a disclaimer out there. I am not a nutritionist, I am not a trainer. I'm none of those things. I'm just a girl that was unhappy about where she was and decided to do some research and make some changes. So one thing that I realized that I had to change was diet. Being healthy and weight loss in general is 80% diet, 20% nutrition. I think the majority of us probably think that those percentages are opposite. And we feel like with exercise, we'll drop all the weight and we can still eat everything that we were eating before. Not saying that if you're trying to lose weight or lose fat, you can't enjoy your the same foods you were eating. You just have to learn how to eat in moderation. And how I learned how to do that was I downloaded an app called MyFitnessPal. MyFitnessPal taught me the importance of tracking my calories. It's important to know how much you're eating. Tracking your calories doesn't have to be a negative thing. It's actually a necessity if you want to lose weight or be healthy or get in shape. It's important to know how much you're eating every day and to know what you're putting in your body every day. Once I started using my fitness pal and honestly, like being honest with it, I realized how much I was eating. I was easily eating 2,500 calories every single day which is why I was gaining weight so fast. And that's just with food. That's without even entering the alcohol content. I was drinking a lot of beer, taking a lot of shots, a lot of missed drinks, juices, all that stuff. So once I used my fitness pal and I really got an idea of how much I was eating, that was like a reality check for me. And that is where I knew I needed to make the most changes. You cannot out-train a bad diet. It does not matter how hard you go in the gym. If your nutrition is not right, you're not gonna reach your fitness goals. So to say that, I also wanna say, if you're in a position to not really exercise your injury or you just 
I don't know, you don't, you're don't. you injured or you just can't really be that mobile or you don't have the time, start working on your diet. I actually recommend that first. Before you go into the gym or start training and you don't really know what to do in the gym, that's okay. You can do a lot of research along the way and kind of figure out what it is that you want to do to start getting active. But in the meantime, start changing your diet. That is the key to weight loss. Now, my number one thing was sugar. I love sweets. I still love sweets. But too much sugar is weight loss nemesis. You eat too much sugar, your body will have way too much fructose and you'll start to develop a lot of fat around your liver and your stomach area. Sugar, not saying you can't have it, but try to limit it as much as you can. So one of the main ways to lower your sugar intake is to stop drinking all those sugary sodas, a whole bunch of juices, a lot of foods with added sugars. One of the things that I really, really had to change was the coffee. I love coffee. I work in tech and development and we literally drink coffee all day. I still drink coffee, but I had to change my order. Instead of like, you know, frappuccinos with double caramel or um, any type of creamer with mad sugar and just dumping actual granular and sugar in my drink, I was doing that four times a day. What I changed was try to find options. So instead of the super sweet caramel sweeteners or super sweet chocolate sweeteners or whatever type of creamer it is you like to put in your coffee, try an almond milk. Try something low fat or with no sugar at all. And then if you, I was putting actual sugar in there. I don't do that anymore. I mainly use stevia or some type of um, substitute. To keep it natural and to stay away from sugar. That has really, really helped me. And I've also noticed a decrease in my belly area since doing that. I don't know about y'all, but my belly area was like my priority. I was like, I don't care if I got big legs still. I don't care if my butt big. But this stomach has to go. Limiting your sugar will certainly do that. So along with substituting sugar, finding healthy alternatives is another key factor in losing weight. Um, I like to go out and eat with friends sometimes. And a lot of the times you would have a meal that would come with fries or mac and cheese. And not saying that you can't have those things, but try to find healthy alternatives when you go out to eat. Another thing is try to read the menu before you go out to eat too, so you can kind of plan your meal ahead of time. That is key. Knowing what you're going to eat ahead of time is key. And finding out what healthy options are at these restaurants is also key. And when you're cooking too, try to find healthy options like instead of Regular white bread, try whole grain bread. Like I said earlier, instead of regular sugar, try a sugar substitute. Instead of, I don't know, some type of condiment with a lot of sugar, a lot of salt, try a low sodium condiment, try a low fat condiment, low sugar condiment. Also be mindful of your condiments because they do contain a lot of sugar. They do contain a whole lot of calories. You can have like one tablespoon of ranch and that's like 100 calories for some brands of ranch. So just be conscious of healthy alternatives. Eating salad alone isn't enough. Are you frying the chicken or you're, are you frying the protein in your salad? Is it too much cheese in your salad? Are you putting a whole lot of ranch and all this other dressing in your salad? Salad alone is not healthy. It's what you put in the salad. So just finding healthy alternatives in your meals is going to be key. You can still have pizza, you can still have your burgers, you can still have your crazy salads, but just try to have those things in moderation and also have balanced meals throughout the day. So if I have a meal that's so-called unhealthy, I'll make sure that everything else that I eat throughout the day is healthy and I'm still within my caloric limit for that day. Now with healthy alternatives, it is important to find what works for you. I know initially I just started getting like spring mix lettuce from the stores and try to cook like a baked protein and throw that in there with bacon bits and cheese and all that good stuff. So one, I was making salads, not wrong, but not the healthy way. But I also just didn't really know how to make a salad. It's just about finding what works for you. Try different things. Try to have fun with it. Pinterest and Instagram are like where I find a whole lot of recipes. I don't know where I would be without Pinterest and, and IG. You could look up so many hashtags. You could look up so many meals. Try to find a lot of healthy alternatives to what to things you already like. If you really, really love chicken, try to bake your chicken. If you really still love fried chicken, try to eat your chicken with less skin or maybe limit it to like one or two pieces and then have a side salad. That way you're still eat, you're not depriving yourself. You're still eating, you still having healthy options, still eating that what you like. Me personally, if I'm not enjoying my meals, then I'm unhappy and I'm very, very likely to binge. So find healthy alternatives that you can stick to. Find foods that you can eat I'm not saying that you want to eat every day, but you don't mind eating often. Like for me, 
when I first tried kale, I thought it was the nastiest thing. I was like, if I have to eat kale, I will never lose weight. I hate it. I think it's so nasty. If you offer me kale, I will like emphatically say, no, I do not want kale. But I do, however, like spinach. I like um, like romaine lettuce in my salads and spinach in my salads. I don't like fresh mix. So, I mean, just try different things. Try different ways to cook food. Try to bake your protein, um, saute your protein, grill your protein, different seasoning, different flavors. Try things out. Have fun with this because if you're not enjoying your food, you're very, 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 very likely to fail and to slip back into the habits that kind of landed you where you are or where you originally started. So, try to have fun with this. If we're not having fun, if we're not enjoying our foods we're not going to stick to these diets or our relationship with food is going to be broken and that's not what we're trying to do we're trying to change our relationship with food still enjoy what we're eating and reach our goals at the same time so now that i've harped on and on about food let's talk about exercise um for those of us who can have who can work out you know we can go to the gym or we can go on a run or a walk or what have you make sure that you're getting your body moving that is important um, it's not only important to your health, but it'll make you feel better. I know I love the gym. Not everybody loves lifting the weights. Not everybody loves getting on the elliptical, the gazelle, the treadmill, or what have you. Find what you like. Look up different activities that are local. Go on a walk. Um, do a group home with your friends and do like a hiking activity or rock climbing. Go swimming. Try um, try sport. Try softball. Try frisbee. Try baseball. Try anything. Just get your body moving and find things that you want to do and that you can do with people that you enjoy being around. Anything, any journey that you embark on is going to be much more fun if you do it with someone. So if you can find somebody who is also interested in a fitness journey or a weight loss journey or being active in general or even cooking healthy meals in general, that'll make this journey even more fun and even easier. You'll forget that you're like on a weight loss or that you're actually on a journey because this is your new lifestyle and you're enjoying your foods, you're enjoying your activity, and you're sharing with people that you love being around. Other fun things you could do if you don't have, you know, friends that you want to work out with. If you have an animal, you can walk. I have a crazy dog. If you follow me on IG, you see this guy all the time. Come here, buddy. Oh, yes. yes, yes, yes. Who doesn't want to go on walks with this dude? Huh? Who doesn't want to go on walks with him? I take him on long walks, maybe like a mile and a half, two miles sometimes after work, just to get more exercise and get my body moving. He's so weird. <laughs> So if you have an animal, if you have kids, I mean, friends, go and walk with them, do active things with them. That's another way to get your body moving and get active. Another tip, small tip that I want to include, don't be obsessed with the scale. Being on the scale discouraged me so many times and it has caused me to fail in this journey so many times. When weight wasn't moving the way that I thought it should weight, if I saw a slight gain, I would get discouraged and I would quit on myself. Don't be obsessed with the scale. Try to weigh yourself once a week even I've even met some women who weigh themselves once a month. That way they're not even tempted to weigh themselves during like that time of the month or they're not getting obsessive and weighing themselves every single day. Don't be obsessed with the scale. Also track your weight and your progress in photos and how you're fitting your clothes. The scale is a tool. It is not a dictionary. It does not define you. So don't let it by getting on it every single day. And the last thing that I did was I had to keep in mind that I needed to be patient and consistency. Not necessarily, well, I'm not the most patient person, so don't even get me to lie with you. It ain't even about being patient. It's just about being consistent. Know that if you are consistent with what you're doing, you will get the results that you want. We didn't fall into bad habits in a day, a week, a month. We're not gonna get the body that we want or feel as great as we want to in a day, a week, a month. It's gonna take change and it's gonna take time. So be patient with yourself. This is a learning process. This is a journey. We are retraining our mind and our body to do things that it may have never ever done before. So try to just enjoy it and be patient with it, disciplined and consistent. Um, share what you learn with people. That's also a good thing. I like to talk about meals all the time. If you know me personally, I always talk about, what did you do this weekend? I went to the gym and I meal prepped. Oh, and, and people who know me know that I love that. What did you cook? Oh, I cooked cauliflower rice and this, 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 and this. I'm really, really excited about fitness and health. And I found things that excite me and that I look forward to. So if you can do that, you're more likely to be consistent and you will get exactly where you want to go. 
So with that being said, I will certainly be continuing this fitness journey. As I said earlier in the video, I, want, I would like to lose another 40 pounds. So I'm going to stay with those tips. And also moving forward, I'm going to be incorporating new tips. I recently like reached a plateau after losing 40 pounds. My body kind of got used to what I was doing over and over, and I've had to switch things up. So I've done a lot of changes in what I'm doing, and I look forward to sharing those in the future. If you have not yet subscribed to the channel, please make sure that you do that. I look forward to seeing you in the next few days. I will be dropping two to three videos a week. If you have any suggestions or ideas or questions for me, any videos that you want to see, um, you know, in the upcoming weeks or days or months or what have you, I will be continuing this throughout my whole journey. And even when I get to where I want to go, I'm going to continue because I want to help people learn and enjoy the journey. When I first started, I thought that I would never be in a place where fitness was like my first love. I thought I would never be in a place where I loved exercise, where I loved cooking healthy meals. But I found meals that I love. I found exercises that I love. And most importantly, I'm obsessed with results. So without rambling on and on and on, because I can definitely do that. I love talking about this stuff. Um, if you don't follow me on Instagram, make sure that you do that. I'll go ahead and put my username at the bottom. And if you're on the fitness journey with me, Go ahead and use the hashtags can I flex and can I flex fam so I can find you, repost you, and show you love. We're a family and we're getting through this together. Any journey you embark on, you need a support system, I'll be that for you. Thank you for being that for me. So until next time, stay blessed.